Hello, how you doing? I'm exhausted. <laughs> I spent the weekend out at Oz Comic Con in Melbourne and I got to meet a bunch of you guys. It was awesome, really. Um, spent a lot of time in the studio, kind of messing around with the cat. And then suddenly you have this intense weekend of social activity. Uh, but it's just so good to, to meet people and get feedback, uh, be able to interact with you guys. Um, and I just, I had a great weekend. I met a bunch of great artists and, and made a bunch of friends. Guess what we're drawing today? Yes, it's more goblins. <laughs> I promise you that there's only two more videos of goblins. We're going to talk today about targeted practice and it's probably the easiest way to sort of speed up your progress um, and it stops you from getting overwhelmed but I'll talk about that in Photoshop. Okay guys, here we are again, goblin number two, the hammer guy. So, um, I mentioned in the previous uh, video with the uh, with the first goblin rendering uh, that I wasn't quite happy with the colors and there was a few things that I would like to do differently and um, I want to I want to kind of have a bit of a discussion here because the process for this one is going to be very similar to the last one so I don't want to bore you by going over exactly the same thing again so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the thought process that I'm using um, with regards to targeted practice now it's really important to target your practice towards um, things that you're weak at or things that you think you could use a bit of work on or that you failed on. Um, and you, you should just use this as part of your process for creating every image. There is no reason, even if you're doing it for clients, um, it's really important to think about where your weaknesses are and how you can approach improving them. Now, I'm not saying that if uh, if you have an important client piece that you should, um, you know, use it as a test palette and, and get all experimental and try and uh, use it as training. Um, but there is almost always something in the process that you can work on that isn't going to impede um, whatever process that you have that's generating uh, results every time. Um, maybe I should explain that a little bit better. Um, when you're working professionally, you should have a process for creating an image that is going to result in an end product 100% of the time without too much messing about. With your personal work, you can get a little bit more loose and experimental, um, but you should have a certain way of finishing an image um, because you cannot let clients down. You need to um, you know, bring quality to the table every single time. But within that process that you've come up with, and this is my process for doing character designs and coloring them in, um, this is what I would do uh, for a client, um, there are still things in this process that I can improve upon. So with the previous Goblin, um, things got a bit cold, so I started with a warmer base color. Uh, but, you know, philosophy is the same. I've got some areas within the skin tone that are a bit warmer because there's blood near the surface and bits that are a bit colder. Um, and I'm just using exactly the same process, dividing it into light side, dark side. But this time, um, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm focusing on shadow transitions. So I want it to be more deliberate with where I... Uh, decided the form was turning to shadow or light. So all of these edges of the shadows. I wanted to be very careful to pay attention to whether or not it was going to be a sharp transition or a soft transition. And perhaps a good example of what I'm talking about would be down where the quadricep muscle is coming in, uh, meeting the, the tendon and then attaching onto the patella or the kneecap. Uh, on that leg that's coming forward. So where the muscle is ending, I have a sharp curve heading down and then a sharp plane transition there. So the shadow is a sharp edge shadow, but on the quad muscle uh, on top, there's a nice soft gradient um, wrapping around the thigh like a cylinder. That would be a good example of a soft transition and shadow um, meeting a, a hard transition. And um, yeah, it, it's definitely very exaggerated, like there's not going to be, well, maybe some people have got really exaggerated leg muscles, but uh, most people wouldn't have that kind of sharp transition, but it 
it's being more descriptive of what the tension in the muscle is. It's describing the pose, being a bit exaggerated, because his his knee's a little bit bent, and his leg's bent at the knee. So his his quad is holding up the weight of the rest of his body. So you want to have those muscles active, and a good way to do that is to exaggerate um, the tension in the muscle. So that's what I'm doing there. And this entire image, I'm trying to focus and pay more attention than I usually would to whether the edge of a shadow should be hard or soft. Some of the other things that I was thinking about when approaching this render um, was actually kind of meditating on some of the things that I had spoken about in the previous episode, right? Um, about how more work up front will result in a faster finish, you know? And I was like, ah, this is true in so many things when you're doing, when you're doing art. It, it just seems to be almost a universal rule. Like <laughs> The more time you spend up front, uh, within reason, obviously. <laughs> uh, the more problems you solve up front, the faster the whole thing comes together. And so a nice result of focusing more on these shadows and how um, how they were either going to be soft or hard or you know how they transitioned as they turned around the forms and things, focusing more on that first initial um, shadow pass where we were just dividing the entire form up into areas that are receiving light and areas that are not receiving light. Um, I was focusing so much more on being bolder with that, with that process and more precise that um, the next shadow pass was uh, much easier <laughs> and, and seemed to describe more. Um, and then it required less intervention later on, uh, fewer touch-ups. So it did end up actually speeding up the process. So, um, and that's great because I'm always looking for ways to become more efficient. Um, and you'll see that by the end of this, by focusing on some aspect of, of the process that seemed a bit weak and improvised or something, um, I was actually able to receive, uh, to uh, result in a much higher quality render in a much faster time, which is fantastic. and. Um, that's why I wanted to talk about this targeted practice thing. If you are able to look at your process and say, this is something that I'm weak at and, you know, don't get dis discouraged and disheartened and think, oh, I suck, you know, they'll never get there or whatever. And, and rather say, oh, this is something I'm weak at. Great. All right. How do I work on it? You know, and come at it in a practical way like that. You know, what's one little thing I can try and think of to improve? You know, because if you think, oh, this sucks, you know, everything's wrong with the image. Um, I'm never going to get there. I just have to do a thousand more images and I, I'm never going to be any good because there's too much stuff to fix. You're never going to get anywhere. You're right, you know. But if you go, OK, so uh, it sucks. But uh, I'm, I'm not very good at a lot of things. But one of the things that I'm really not good at is... I don't know, value transitions like I was doing here. Uh, maybe I'll just focus on that one thing for the next image, you know? Forget, you know, some of the other stuff. Maybe your anatomy is not great. Maybe your color choices are also not great. Uh, but if you just make the next image uh, and target your practice towards one specific thing to say, this image, I'm focusing on value transitions. Most of all, I'm still gonna try and do the other stuff, but I'm really gonna be thinking, value transitions name the file value transitions or something so you don't forget and then just work on it in that way in a targeted way um, every single time you make an image something else something else um, eventually you're going to get much better you're going to be breaking a massive problem down into a bunch of smaller parts and that's how you should approach every large problem right break it up into smaller parts it's not as intimidating that way now, I just wanted to go back over um, a topic I was talking about just before, about the speed of the image and how it came together much faster because I, um, I worked harder on those fundamental uh, steps in the process. Um, because I think it touches on a very important thing that took me ages to learn and I still forget it sometimes because, uh, I don't know, there's a lot of psychology going on here, I'm sure, but when you don't have much time to finish an image something in your head says 
if I want to finish this image on time, I'm going to have to speed up. So you start like moving your hand real quick and creating new layers and like, you know, painting over in an erratic way. Uh, oh, I've, got to, I've got to finish it. I've got to be real quick. You know, forget this complicated layer structure that I've set up to prevent myself from making mistakes. I'm going to create another layer on top and just paint freely over all of my clipping masks, etc., etc. Just break the system. I've only got a couple of hours until I have to hand this in. That is a certain way to deliver a product late. <laughs> what you should do is slow down. Focus really carefully on making no mistakes. Because the only reason this stuff takes too long is because you make a bunch of mistakes and have to fix them. For every incorrect stroke, it's going to take five or six strokes. Plus going and finding the layer it's on and doing all this messing around to fix it. But if you just pay a little bit more attention up front and make that one stroke correct, you're not going to have to fix it. It can be in the final image. If you just layer more and more information on top of good foundations, you'll end up with a finished image very quickly. Okay, I think I said the same thing 10 times, <laughs> but it's important. Slow down to speed up. Do it right the first time. There we go, 11 times. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Ah oh dear, that's one lesson that if you learned it earlier on, um, and you actually absorb it, uh, you can save yourself a lot of hassle. Okay, don't be intimidated by how fast some professionals out there uh, can draw, especially like Feng Zhu and stuff like that. And I, re I remember watching Design Cinema when I was starting out, trying to get get into art as a career. And man, that guy produces stuff fast, and you think he's just producing it fast. You know, he's really fast. He's moving his hand fast. He is. But the more important thing is he's not making any mistakes. <laughs> he does it right the first time every time. And that's what's making it fast. Um, yeah, you can focus on moving your hand fast once you've, uh, once you've mastered it to the point where you're not making any mistakes. So never. <laughs> it's probably the answer to that. Uh, this one's coming to an end. Um, yeah, look how much better it turned out than the last one. The warmer skin tones... Uh, the more decisive, um, bold shadows. Uh, it's it's really reading as a 3D form quite well. And I've got a lot more texture in it. Boop, there he goes. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun doing this guy. And I've had fun talking about what I learned out of the process. Um, you never stop learning when you're doing this stuff. You should never rest on your laurels and think that you're good enough. Um, just always try and strive for that little bit better and yeah the moral of this whole thing slow down think of the things that are your weaknesses little achievable goals small small achievable goals you know maybe you want to focus on just that one little thing like I'm just going to focus on uh, for example what I need to focus on next the anatomy of the foot because <laughs> the feet here the feet here are weak um <clears throat> Oh, well, so maybe that means like next time I'm just going to focus a little bit on those feet. That's that's not a hard thing to try and focus on, right? And if you do a hundred more images and you focus on one thing every time, that's a hundred things you just focused on and you'll get much better. Thank you so much for watching again, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I've got one last announcement. Um, I've started a Patreon. So I know that the uh, channel is pretty early days, but I figured, you know, uh, putting in a lot of work, so why not just put the old busking hat down and if some generous people want to come by and throw a dollar in there, well, I'm not going to argue. <laughs> so, um, yeah, jump on over if you think the show is worth a dollar. If not, don't worry about it. I'm going to keep on producing these videos and they're always going to be free. Anyway, I hope to see you guys next time when we finish up the Goblin series. I promise it's done. Um, and then we're going to jump into some really interesting new things. I've got some ideas for the channel and I'd like to take it in some new directions and definitely move on to some different subjects. So if you're interested in that, like, comment, subscribe, um, and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.